Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about something a bit different. Over the past two weeks I've been experimenting with playing games and most of my other daily stuff only on Linux. A lot of you guys who watch the channel are at least a little bit techy, so I'm sure you guys are at least aware of Linux. But just in case you're not, Linux is basically just another operating system like Windows or Mac OS, but it's not Windows or Mac OS. Obviously, that's a massive oversimplification, but in the most basic sense, it is just another operating system. Oh, and by the way, while the background footage in this video doesn't have a huge amount of relevance to what I'm saying, it's worth noting that it was played and recorded on Linux. So let's talk about why I'm testing out using Linux as my daily driver. Well. If any of you saw my video about improving FPS in Apex Legends, you might have noticed that I'm still using Windows 7. And I'm actually surprised how few people ridiculed me for being on Windows 7 still. Although my friend Dread did make this comment on Discord, which made me chuckle. Anyway, the reason I'm still on Windows 7 isn't because I'm a technophobe or scared of change or anything like that. I actually used Windows 10 for a couple of years and there were a few things I liked about it, like the fact that it supports newer technologies out of the box, the multi-desktop feature and the task view when you press Windows and Tab. To be fair, those second two are features that have been part of Mac OS and Linux for well over a decade now, but hey, at least Microsoft caught up eventually. The obvious reason why a lot of people don't like Windows 10 is the whole your computer constantly spying on you thing, which is obviously not great, but it's easy enough to disable all of that stuff. And besides, if you have a smartphone or use any kind of social media, including Discord and stuff like that, you're probably not safe from prying eyes anyway. Personally, while I'm not exactly happy about it, I've kind of come to accept that we're all constantly being watched. And side note, what kind of weird dystopian future are we living in where a lot of us, including myself, are actually okay with being spied on? Weird. Another issue with Windows 10 is all the bloatware that comes with it. It used to be that if you bought a pre-built PC, it would probably come with a bunch of bloatware, but if you built your own computer and installed Windows yourself, you'd have a relatively clean install. But with Windows 10, there are a bunch of quote unquote quality of life features that come pre-installed. I mean, seriously, does anyone actually use Cortana? But hey, if you look after your computer and don't install a load of crap and make it slow down, you only really need to install Windows once. So you only need to remove the bloatware once. So it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, or at least I can see past it. The thing I physically can't see past is the forced updates. Security patches and the like being forced is one thing, and I can totally understand that. You should always stay up to date with security stuff. But the fact that you could be in the middle of doing something and your computer just starts downloading a huge update without telling you, that's just dumb, especially if you have a slow internet connection or something like that. If you're in the middle of a game, you just suddenly start lagging out because Windows is like, hey, it's time to update. I know there are some settings you can play with to postpone updates, or you can tell Windows that you're on a metered connection or whatever, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to upgrade. and this this is the part that made me go back to Windows 7. There was an update, I think it was the creators update in 2017, that just broke my audio interface. You know, the, the thing I use to connect my microphone that I'm speaking to you with right now. After that update, the drivers just stopped playing nice with Windows and my computer couldn't even see the audio interface anymore. And it's kind of ironic that the creators update broke my hardware that I used to, you know, create stuff. To be completely fair, it is an older audio interface, but audio gear isn't like computers where newer is usually better. People in the music industry are still making use of microphones, preamps, compressors, and equalizers that were built as far back as the 50s or 60s because they still sound great. So while the audio interface is old, the mic preamps in it are still really good by today's standards. In fact, I'd have to spend upwards of three or 400 pounds to get something that sounds equally as good. So rather than spending that money on something that I shouldn't have to get, I just went back to Windows 7. No biggie, right? But the problem now is support for Windows 7 is coming to an end next year. So if I want to continue using a relatively secure operating system, I have no choice but to switch. And the thing is, I know it's just one thing that broke with an update, but the fact that it's even a possibility that something could break after an update is just ridiculous. I shouldn't have to cross my fingers every time there's a big update in case something else breaks. So with the end of Windows 7 looming, I either have to go back to Windows 10, which might mean having to buy a new audio interface and God 
knows what else, or look at an alternative. So my options are Mac OS, which is just not gonna happen, Windows 8.1, good joke, or Linux. Ultimately, I might have to just switch to Windows 10 and deal with the issues, but for now, I'm at least giving Linux a go. So what's so good about Linux? Well, first of all, it doesn't cost anything. So giving it a try isn't really costing me anything except a little time getting things up and running. Secondly, depending on which distribution you go with, there's literally no bloatware. And that includes no spying or any of that crap. A distribution or distro, by the way, is basically just like a different flavor of Linux created by different developers. Kind of like the different versions of Android you might get on your phone. And third, and this may or may not come as a surprise to you, but hardware support is just, you, you know how Apple Apple used to have that whole, it just works saying about their products, which, and I'm speaking from a lot of experience here, just isn't true. The more accurate thing about Mac OS is if it's gonna work, it'll probably just work. But if it doesn't work, there's literally no work around. It's never gonna work. But with Linux, honestly, at least with my hardware, it actually does just work. Most of my gear is fairly up to date and all of that just works, but I do have an oldish webcam and the old audio interface that I mentioned before. And the weird thing is, I just plug them in and they just work straight out of the box. Neither Windows nor Mac just work with my audio interface right out of the box. So that's really quite something. And it says a lot about Linux. And the other thing I love about Linux is how customizable it is. If I wanted to stick to a Windows style desktop, I could make it look, work and feel almost exactly like Windows 7, 10, XP, 95, whatever. Likewise, if I wanted my computer to look exactly like a Mac, I could do that too. In fact, there's a whole Linux distro that unashamedly rips off almost all of Apple's design choices. Or I could go with something slightly different from either of them, like the GNOME desktop or the more utilitarian, but still potentially beautiful i3 window manager. Another great thing about Linux is the fact that you don't have to go to individual websites to download the software you need. Depending on the distro, it might be as simple as ticking off all the software you want to install and clicking go. And not only that, but again, depending on your distro, your operating system can automatically keep everything up to date. And an important distinction there from Windows is that you ultimately have control over that. If you want to stick with older stuff, that's fine. But if you do want to stay up to date, you don't have to individually go to each piece of software and update it. Your operating system just does all of that for you with possibly just one or two clicks and boom, everything's up to date. Firefox, Discord, Steam, OBS, you name it. It's all up to date in a couple of clicks. Kind of like Android actually, which incidentally is also based on Linux. It's just such a great quality of life feature that honestly, I'm surprised isn't part of stock Windows or Mac. So there are a lot of good things to say about Linux, but it also comes with some downsides. First of all, some distros are a little tough to get up and running. There are some easier ones, but with most, unless you're doing just really basic stuff like browsing the web and using a word processor, you're probably going to have to use the command line or edit some config files at some point. It's actually way less of an issue now than it used to be. I've used Linux on and off for like 13 years now, and it's crazy how easy it is to get stuff set up compared to back then. But there is still the odd thing you need to sort out in the command line, especially if you're trying to play non-native games like I am. To be fair though, if you were just playing native games like CSGO or Dota 2, you actually might not need to touch the command line. But the main games I'm playing right now are Overwatch and Elder Scrolls Online, neither of which have native Linux versions. Fortunately though, through the magic and genius of some Linux developers, I can shockingly play both of them with almost the same performance as Windows, which is just insane. There are a few issues like a few ESO add-ons not working and a couple of oddities with Overwatch, like the crouch button only binding to right control instead of left, which is weird. But for the most part, there are workarounds for all of these. For example, for example, in Overwatch, I'm using a script to switch the left and right control while playing, so problem solved. So great, I can just switch to Linux full time now, right? Well, unfortunately, there are still a few issues. One is that a lot of games with anti-cheat software just don't play nice with Linux. So PUBG, Apex Legends, Fortnite, and a bunch of other popular games just aren't gonna work. Having said that, Easy Anti Cheat have said they're working on getting their software to play nice with Linux, so Apex Legends and Fortnite might actually be playable in the near future. Also, some games, while they technically work, don't perform nearly as well as they do on Windows. Battlerite, for example, people are saying it works perfectly on ProtonDB, but I don't think those people have played it natively. It definitely works, 
and the FPS is actually pretty decent, but there's a very noticeable choppiness while playing on Linux. It's slight enough that as a new player you might not care, but as someone who's sunk countless hours into that game, I definitely noticed some issues. But hey, even just a year ago, Overwatch wasn't working. In fact, people were getting wrongfully banned while playing on Linux, and now it almost works at native performance and all the bans have been reversed. Thanks to Valve's Proton, improved performance thanks to tech like Vulkan, and game managers like Lutris, game compatibility is only going to get better in the future. However, the big kicker for me is another software issue, unfortunately. Adobe. And anyone who's familiar with people trying to switch to Linux, I know, I'm basically the stereotype of someone who wants to fully switch but can't. Games and Adobe software. It's always games and Adobe software. Unfortunately though, I do make heavy use of the Adobe suite, particularly Premiere Pro and Photoshop. And while there are Linux alternatives, they're always missing some key features. For example, DaVinci Resolve is a really good alternative to Premiere Pro that is completely professional grade, but the standard version doesn't support the H.264 codec on Linux. I've heard the studio version does work with H.264, but I haven't yet decided whether or not I want to switch to DaVinci Resolve. As for Photoshop, there isn't really a direct professional quality alternative. I've heard a few good things about Photopia, so I'm going to check that out properly. It can even open PSD files, which is interesting. So technically there might be a way around the Adobe suite, but bear in mind that I do use those pieces of software professionally, so relearning means downtime and and a lack of professional grade features is a complete deal breaker. So while I have had to boot back into Windows a few times over the last couple of weeks, as someone who's used Linux on and off for a pretty long time, and I know how much work goes into Windows compatibility layers and that sort of thing, I've still been shocked how much I can get done without needing to switch back to Windows. I remember getting WoW working on Linux in 2006 and it wasn't pretty. It kinda worked, but it was a huge performance downgrade and everything looked super janky. These days, not only are there quite a few more titles that work natively on Linux, even the Windows games look and feel almost as good as they do natively on Windows, which is just crazy. So I know this is a little different from what I normally do, but it's something that I've been messing around with lately and I thought you guys might like to hear about it. If you want to know more about Linux, feel free to hop into my Discord server and I'd be happy to chat about it some more. And if there's enough interest, I might even do some tutorials on getting this stuff up and running. In any case, I'm going to continue using Linux as much as possible for now and I'll let you know how it's going in another couple of weeks time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion and I guess Linux stuff too. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.